Hi, my name is John Colombo. I'm a professor of psychology at the University of Kansas. And I'm here today to talk to you about a study of LC-PUFA supplementation and cognitive development. The objective for today is to show you the results of a recent randomized clinical trial of supplementation given to infants during the first year of life. This will include some detail about cognitive development and testing and how to properly interpret the results of cognitive tests administered from infancy through early childhood. The study that we ran is called the Diamond Trial, and in it, babies were randomized to one of four different groups receiving different formulas. They were fed these formulas for a year, and we followed them up up to about age six. One group got no lc pufas The other three groups all got lc pufas but with varying amounts of DHA. Babies were fed the formulas for the first 12 months of life, and we know that the supplementation significantly affected their blood lc pufas because we tested it at two different points during the first year. One of the questions we often get in running a study like this is why we use different measures at different points in development. The answer is that different tests are different, differentially appropriate for children of different ages. At younger ages, it's most appropriate to test simple things like vision or attention. At older ages, it's more appropriate to test the kinds of things that emerge later, like executive function. That includes things like inhibition, rule learning, and switching and shifting of attention. What you see here is the design of the study showing the four arms of the trial, as well as each of the groups in terms of attrition and loss of subjects through the, the six years of the study. We ended with about 20 babies in each of the four groups by the time we finished the work. One of the first things that were published out of the study were the results from the visual acuity tests done at 2, 4, 9, and 12 months of age. These results showed a clear advantage for children receiving any amount of lc pufas over the control group, which received none. The sample that we followed was well documented, and the results of the demographic analyses that we ran are presented in this slide here. This slide shows a partial list of the outcomes that we used in following these children out to about age six. It shows particularly the results that we're going to discuss today. Visual habituation with heart rate, which we measured at four, six, and nine months. The Bailey scales of development, which we administered at 18 months. The dimensional card sort task, which we administered from three to five years of age. And finally, the Peabody picture vocabulary test, which we administered at five years. Measures of visual attention were taken at four, six, and nine months of age. These included behavioral measures of attention, such as simple looking, as well as autonomic measures, which included heart rate. We used the two measures together to provide convergent evidence that babies were actually paying attention and actively processing information while they were looking. This slide shows the way we use convergent measures of behavior and heart rate in order to get a good measure of whether or not babies were actually actively engaged in information processing. We analyzed the proportion of time that babies spent in sustained attention as a function of the formula to which they had been assigned during that first year. What we found was that the two middle doses of DHA, that is 0.32% and 0.64%, improved the quality of attention across all three ages that we tested. Babies who were fed lc pufas at those doses showed much better attention at that time. At 18 months of age, we administered the Bailey Scales of Infant Development, which is a widely used measure of developmental status. The Bailey Scales are often used in studies of lc pufa or DHA supplementation in order to try to demonstrate effects. We included it in our study as well. When children reached three years of age, we were able to tap into more complicated types of cognition called executive function. Among the tasks that tap into those kinds of abilities is the dimensional change card sort. In this task, children are presented with decks of cards that they can sort. They can sort bunnies with bunnies and cars with cars. That is, they can play the shape game. In the second case, blue things are sorted with blue things and red things are sorted with red things. In both cases, learning the rule necessitates ignoring one of the dimensions. So if you play the color game, you have to ignore the shape of the image. If you play the shape game, you have to ignore the color of the image. After the child has mastered this, we play a trick on them in that we tell them now the game has changed and they have to sort the cards on the basis of the other dimension. So if they've played the color game, they need to play the shape game. And if they've played the shape game, they now need to play the color game. 
This provides us with a measure of their flexibility and adaptability in thinking, and it also provides us with a measure of their predisposition to maintain or persevere with the rule that they previously learned. This slide shows the results of that task administered at 36 to 60 months of age. The first thing to notice is the white bar. The white bar represents the control group, or children who received no LC PUFAs during the first year. If you notice, those children don't actually improve on the task until 60 months of age. However, children fed LC PUFAs, at least in the two middle doses that we used, show a significant improvement on that task beginning one year earlier than that, that is at 48 months of age. So feeding those LC PUFAs, at least at those two doses, accelerated the development of performance on that task by a full year. When children reached five years of age, we administered the Peabody Picture Vocabulary Task. The PPVT is a well-standardized and widely used measure of vocabulary, and it's often used as a surrogate for verbal IQ. What we observed was that the groups, once again, who received the two middle doses of LC PUFAs during that first year of life, significantly outperformed children who received none. To summarize the results and the conclusions to be drawn from this long study of children's development, we think a number of things are really important. The first conclusion was that postnatal feeding of LC PUFA enhanced formulas at 0.32% of DHA or above for that first year produced lasting effects of cognitive development. Indeed, the lowest dose that we tried, 0.32%, was sufficient to produce the benefits that we saw over the first six years. A second thing that we observed was reduced benefit at the highest DHA dose of 0.96%. This reduced benefit was not expected, but it may have something to do with the fact that the DHA to ARA ratio in that formula exceeded the recommended level of 1.0. We think that this study has a number of other important messages with respect to evaluating how nutrition affects cognitive development in infancy and early childhood.